There are lots of different kinds of transducers that are used to measure temperature. All right, one of the simplest ways of measuring temperature is uh, we use expansion and contraction of materials. For a liquid, uh, we use expansion and contraction to produce a little liquid and glass thermometer. Uh, the molecules smack into the glass. Uh, the higher the temperature of the molecules smack into the glass, the more they vibrate the glass, the more they vibrate the glass, the more they vibrate the material inside. It expands because it warms up and the temperature goes up. Very simple, okay? Um, that expansion and contraction can be used for other devices. Uh, let's see, such as, oh, the bimetallic strip, which I know it sounds like an ACDC song, but it's really just based on the principle of expansion and contraction. If I take two different metals and I bond them together, these metals will have different, two different metals that have uh, different expansion properties. Now, if the red expands and contracts more than the green, and I clamp down this side so it can't move, then what's going to happen is the red side as things hit up, as things heat up, it's going to expand more and it's going to move the switch or whatever it is this way or the needle if you want. As it cools down it's going to move it this way and so you convert thermal energy into mechanical motion. This uh, nice little outdoor clock which uh, the college paid for this morning, you may find out soon, um, has a bimetallic strip in the back. Now you want to make the strip as long as you can because that produces more expansion and contraction. And so this little coil right there, that's the bimetallic strip. It's connected directly to the needle, but we made it as long as possible by winding it up in a large coil to, ex to enhance the effect. It's connected directly to the needle on this side, and it's calibrated, so it gives you the temperature. It's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Glad that's not Celsius. Let's see, what else? Uh, oh, there's thermocouples. Thermocouples work off something called the Seebeck effect. And as you heat one side and the other side is colder, then electrons in a conductor are going to be very sparse over here. Just like if you heat any gas, it's going to, or anything, it's going to expand, right? And so there'll be fewer electrons here. It's colder here, so they're going to contract on this side and they're going to huddle over here. The reason the electrons are moving is it's a conductor, and that means that the atoms stay in place, but the conductors, I mean the electrons, are free to move. And I produce a negative charge here, positive charge there. Now I use, in a real thermocouple, you use two different, you use two different metals, and uh, so the junction between the metals, uh, the two metals have different transport rates. You know, some, uh, some move a lot of electrons, some move just a few. And so at the junction between them, there's always going to be a voltage difference. That's the Seebeck effect. And the thermocouples are very handy. They're, you get very rapid uh, temperature change measurements. Um, thermocouples don't measure absolute temperature like the liquid and glass bulb. They measure temperature difference. So they're measuring the temperature difference between one side and the other. Now, what you can do to get a really accurate reading and, and to get a nice stable reference is you can stick one side in ice water. Uh, that's at zero degrees Celsius. Uh, and that gives you a nice, uh, easy temperature calculation. Another way to measure temperature is uh, with resistance. Uh, resistive temperature devices or um, uh, platinum resistance uh, detectors. This right here, w basically what it says is, the way it works, is if I have a If I heat up a conductor, generally its resistance will go up. And there's a correlation between resistance and temperature uh, for these uh, resistive temperature devices. And it's a nice, pretty much a nice straight line. So as the temperature heats up, the resistance of the device goes up. If you're running a voltage across it, that means the current's going to drop. And that change in current, well, you can correlate that directly to the temperature. Another device. Is the thermistor, and the thermistor is uh, it uses a semiconductor, and so the thermistor it can go both ways. Uh, you can have positive thermistors where the resistance goes up with temperature, but with a semiconductor, um, temperature can also be used to give electrons more energy so they can jump over the threshold to the other side. So I can also have a negative slope 
I can have it so that resistance decreases with increasing temperature. So thermistors work off of uh, semiconductors. Um, now there are a few others. One more. Uh, the optical pyrometer. Uh, we talked about black body radiation. An object that heats up as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, uh, it starts to, it emits higher frequency wavelengths and getting into the visible. If it's hot enough so that it's emitting in the visible, you know, um, if it's just getting hot enough to be visible, it's going to be dull red and it gets orange, yellow, white, you know, you've heard of white hot, um, blue hot. You can measure that. An optical pyrometer is a device where you look through, you look at the object through a, a, a viewing area and then you adjust a little swatch, a little line of color that runs through it. And you adjust that swatch until it disappears into that color. You match it perfectly. And then you look at the corresponding temperature because the color that a black body puts out uh, corresponds to its temperature. So it's an easy calculation. And these were just but a few of the ways we measure temperature. Perhaps the most common ways though.